innovators are the people who will be remembered. Imitators come and go. personal something is to you, the more universal it is. So if you can purvey uh, love, loss, you know, um, innocence, you know, any, you know, pain, whatever, in your piece, everyone's experienced those things. You know, that's really what art is. What we're supposed to be doing as artists is to inspire thought, to evoke emotion in the beholder. There's so many different facets to being a successful glass blower these days. You don't just become a great glass artist overnight. The students aren't just learning techniques, they're learning what Preston and I have learned from having a glass career that we support ourselves in doing. This class is gonna be really well geared toward people that are still kind of entering into sculpting. They're coming to the class, they're open to to learning a lot of the more basic type techniques. techniques are basically what glass blowing is about. There's going to be a lot of focus on that. The techniques that are required to do sculpture. How to get the color onto the glass. Attachments, carving techniques. We're also going to talk about shaping. The different types of seals, side seals, the diffy seal. How to break stuff down and put it back together. How to use color in a uh, specific way. There's going to be a lot of hands-on stuff in this class. We use a uh, Bunsen burner heavily. It's something that I don't see a lot of other flame workers doing. Is the Bunsen burner, that changed my game. You know, and, and Preston was the first one that I really saw using it. And it allows you to keep your piece out of the kiln for about half an hour, or, you know, as long as you want. How to keep your piece hot and in turn, maintain a high level of confidence as you're working through your piece. So it just ends up in the kiln finished instead of in pieces on your bench or on the floor. It helps students you know, realize that your glass does crack and you're going to have cracking issues, but how do you fix that? How do you move beyond that and not just collapse into, oh, it's ruined, it's, it's done? You really have to have a plan, a methodical plan. You've got to think multiple moves ahead. It's not just about the hand skills. The combination of those techniques and ways. Then I feel like you'll be able to make anything you want. Or what, make your approach more infinite. You know, when you're a kid, you have that sense of innocence and wonder, and the world is a beautiful, special, magical place. And slowly along the way, we lose that. You know, we all put up an exterior, a mask, or whatever, but we're all pretty gentle and fragile on the inside. I feel as long as I'm pulling from what I truly am personally passionate about, I'm being true to myself, and I'm being true to the audience, and the audience responds to that. I had a lot of people interested in the class telling me, I don't think I'm good enough to take the class yet. And I just want to let them all know that there isn't a person that isn't good enough to take the class from Rob and I. I don't believe that that person exists. There is going to definitely be something that you will take away from it, no matter what your skill level. There are things that Rob and I do that are very unique that I haven't seen any other glass artist do. Create something new that you know has a presence, that has an attitude, that has life to it.